You're telling me that humans spend hours moving tiny pieces of wood and plastic around on a flat surface for? Funzi Zylop's antenna twitched in disbelief as he stared at his fellow xenoanthropologist, Gluxis. Gluxis, her iridescent scales shimmering with excitement, nodded vigorously. I know it sounds ridiculous, but hear me out. These board games, as they call them, are apparently a cornerstone of human social interaction and cognitive development. The two alien researchers were huddled in their cloaked observation pod, hovering just outside the window of a quaint little shop on Earth called Meeples and Monsters Inside. A group of humans were gathered around a table, their faces contorted in a mixture of concentration and... Was that joy? Xylorp squinted his compound eyes, focusing on the scene before him. But why? Don't they have advanced simulations or neural interfaces for entertainment? Glixis let out a sound that could only be described as a mixture of a laugh and a hiccup. Oh, they do. But get this, they prefer these primitive contraptions. Can you believe it? Hardly, Zig Zylorp muttered, his tentacles curling in confusion. What's the point of it all? Well, Glaxis began, her voice taking on that annoyingly enthusiastic tone she always used when explaining human behavior. From what I've observed, these games serve multiple purposes. They're a form of social bonding, intellectual stimulation, and... She paused for dramatic effect, which only made Zig Silorp want to roll all seven of his eyes, or dot dot dot, and a way to assert dominance, without resorting to physical violence, Glaxis concluded triumphantly. Zig Zylorp's antenna perked up at this. Dominance, you say? Now, that's interesting. How exactly does that work? Glixis grinned, her razor-sharp teeth gleaming in the dim light of the pod. Oh, it's fascinating. They compete against each other using these intricate rule systems. The winner gets to experience a surge of neurotransmitters that humans find pleasurable, while the losers often experience mild distress. And they voluntarily subject themselves to this. Emotional rollercoaster Zigzylorp asked, his skepticism evident in the way his exoskeleton bristled. Exactly, Gluxis exclaimed, her tail wagging with excitement. It's like they're addicted to the unpredictability of it all. One moment they're laughing, the next they're groaning in frustration, and then they're right back to plotting their next move. Zizylorp turned his attention back to the humans in the shop. A loud burst of laughter erupted from the group, followed by a series of playful insults and dramatic gestures. I see what you mean about the emotional fluctuations he observed, but surely this is just a niche activity. It can't be that widespread. Gluxis's antenna vibrated in what Zizylorp recognized as her equivalent of a chuckle. Oh, my dear colleague, you have no idea. This board game phenomenon has been a part of human culture for millennia. From ancient civilizations to the modern era, humans have been obsessed with these things. Millennia Zizylorp repeated, his disbelief growing by the second. You're telling me that a species capable of splitting atoms and exploring their solar system still clings to pushing bits of wood around a table for entertainment. Not just entertainment, Glux is corrected, her tone taking on that lecturing quality that Zizylorp found both impressive and irritating. These games have been used for everything from religious rituals to military strategy training. The humans even have a saying you can discover more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. Zylorp's exoskeleton rippled in what passed for a shudder among his species. That's oddly profound, but also terrifying. Are you suggesting that these seemingly innocent pastimes are actually complex psychological experiments? Gluxus's eyes glowed with excitement. Now you're getting it. But here's the real kick of the humans don't even realize the full extent of what they're doing. To them, it's just fun. Fun, Zeke Zylorp repeated, tasting the unfamiliar word. I'm not sure I'll ever understand that concept. Oh, come on, Gluxis teased, her scales changing color to a playful purple. Don't tell me you've never enjoyed a good round of quantum probability calculations or a rousing session of telepathic debate. Zizylorp's antenna drooped slightly. Well, yes, but those serve clear purposes in advancing our understanding of the universe and honing our mental abilities. These board games seem so arbitrary. Glixis's expression softened. That's just it. Ziorp. The arbitrary nature is part of the appeal. It's a safe space for humans to experience a wide range of emotions and social interactions without real-world consequences. As if on cue, a loud groan emanated from the shop, followed by the clatter of what sounded like small objects hitting a wooden surface. What in the name of the cosmic overmind was that Zizylorp asked, startled by the sudden noise. 
Glixis peered through the window, her eyes widening with delight. Oh, it looks like they're playing something called Settlers of Catan, one of the humans, just lost all their resources to a bad dice roll. Dice, Silorp inquired, his curiosity finally getting the better of him. Small cubes with numbers on them, Gluxis explained. The humans roll them to introduce an element of chance into their games. It's their primitive way of simulating the unpredictability of life. Xylorp watched as the humans in the shop continued their game, their expressions ranging from intense concentration to unbridled glee. Despite his initial skepticism, he found himself oddly fascinated by the proceedings. I suppose there's a certain charm to it all, he admitted reluctantly. But I still don't see how this relates to our mission of determining whether humans are ready for first contact. Gluxus's eyes sparkled with mischief. Oh, but don't you see? These games tell us so much about human psychology, social structures, and problem-solving abilities. And more importantly, she paused again, and this time Xylorp found himself genuinely curious about what she would say next. Dot, 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 they might just be the perfect way for us to interact with humans without revealing our true nature. Zig Xylorp's antenna shot up in surprise. Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? Gluxis nodded enthusiastically. Think about it. We could disguise ourselves as avid board game enthusiasts, integrate ourselves into their gaming communities, and gather invaluable data on human behavior and cognition, all while having a bit of fun ourselves. Z Zylorp had to admit, the idea had merit. It was certainly less invasive than their current method of cloaked observation, and if these games were as revealing of human nature as Gluxis claimed, it could provide insights that years of distant study had failed to yield. All right, he said finally, his tone a mixture of resignation and curiosity. I suppose it's worth a try. But how do we even begin to understand these games, let alone play them convincingly? Gluxus's entire body lit up with excitement. Leave that to me. I've been studying their rule books and watching countless hours of gameplay videos. We'll start with something simple, like Monopoly or Scrabble, and work our way up to the more complex games. And so began the most unlikely undercover operation in the history of intergalactic research. Xylorp and Glaxis, two of the most brilliant xenoanthropologists in the galaxy, found themselves spending their days and nights hunched over colorful boards, rolling dice, and moving little plastic pieces around. At first, it was a disaster. Xylorp kept forgetting that he couldn't use his telepathic abilities to influence the dice rolls, while Gluxis had a habit of accidentally revealing her phosphorescent scales whenever she got too excited about making a good move. But as the weeks went by, something strange began to happen. Xylorp found himself looking forward to their nightly gaming sessions. He began to appreciate the subtle strategies involved in games like chess and go, and even developed a fondness for the chaotic fun of party games like Cards Against Humanity, though explaining some of the more obscure human references to Gluxis often led to hilarious misunderstandings. Gluxis, for her part, became utterly addicted to deck-building games like Dominion and worker placement games like Agricola. She would spend hours analyzing different strategies and pestering Xylorp to play just one more game long after their designated research time had ended. As they immersed themselves deeper into the world of board games, they made an startling discovery humans were far more complex and unpredictable than they had ever imagined. Take, for instance, the night they introduced themselves to a local gaming group at Meeples and Monsters. They had chosen their human disguises carefully Zizylorp as a lanky, bespectacled man named Zack and Glaxis as a bubbly, red-haired woman called Gloria. The group welcomed them warmly, immediately pulling them into a game of betrayal at House on the Hill as the game progressed, Zizylorp or Zack found himself marveling at the human's ability to seamlessly switch between cooperation and competition. Oh, come on, Dave, a woman named Sarah groaned as Dave played a card that forced her character to lose a turn. I thought we were friends. Dave grinned unapologetically. All's fair in love and board games, Sarah. Besides, you screwed me over in Catan last week, remember? Sarah rolled her eyes but couldn't suppress a smile. Fine, but you better watch your back. Revenge is a dish best served with a nat 20. Zig Zylorp leaned over to Gluxis, whispering, Are they angry with each other? Should we intervene? Gluxis shook her head, her eyes twinkling with amusement. No, this is all part of the game. Watch how quickly they'll band together once the haunt begins. Sure enough, as soon as the game's horror element kicked in, with Dave's character revealed as the traitor, the dynamics shifted dramatically. 
the remaining players, including Sarah, immediately began strategizing on how to defeat Dave's now monstrous character. The next few hours were a whirlwind of dice rolling, card drawing, and increasingly dramatic narration as the humans fully immersed themselves in the game's gothic horror story. Zizilop found himself getting caught up in the excitement, actually cheering when his character landed a crucial hit on the monster. As the game came to its climactic conclusion, with the survivors including Zeke Silorp's character narrowly defeating the traitor, the room erupted in a chorus of cheers, high fives, and good-natured ribbing. Man, Dave, you made one scary-ass monster Sarah laughed, punching Dave playfully on the arm. For a minute there I thought we were all goners. Dave took a mock bow. What can I say? I was born to be bad. But seriously, great teamwork, guys. Especially you, Zach. That last role was clutch. Zig Zylorp felt a strange warmth in his chest, or what passed for a chest in his human disguise at the praise. Thank you, he said, trying to mimic the human's casual tone. It was. Fun. And the strangest part was, he meant it. For the first time in his centuries-long career studying alien species, Zizilorp thought he might be starting to understand the concept of fun. As they left the shop that night, Gluxis could barely contain her excitement. Did you see that she whispered as soon as they were out of earshot? The way they switched allegiances, the complex social dynamics, the emotional investment in purely fictional scenarios. It's incredible. Zizilorp nodded, his mind still processing everything he'd observed. I must admit, it was far more enlightening than I expected. But surely this is just one small aspect of human behavior? We can't base our entire assessment of their species on how they act during these games. Glixis's antenna twitched in that way that meant she was about to launch into one of her theories. But don't you see? These games are a microcosm of human society. Think about it resource management, negotiation, bluffing, long-term strategy versus short-term gains. These are all skills that humans use in their daily lives and in shaping their civilizations. Zig Zylorp had to admit she had a point. As they continued their undercover mission over the next few months, he began to see patterns emerging. The humans who excelled at economic games like Power Grid often had a keen understanding of real-world market dynamics. Those who dominated in social deduction games, like Werewolf, displayed a remarkable ability to read body language and detect lies skills that would be invaluable in diplomatic situations. But it wasn't just the correlation between gaming skills and real-world abilities that fascinated the alien researchers. It was the way board games seemed to bring out both the best and worst in human nature often simultaneously. They witnessed acts of incredible generosity, like the time a veteran player spent an entire evening teaching a complex game to a group of newcomers, patiently explaining rules and strategy with no regard for his own chances of winning. But they also saw moments of petty spite with players holding grudges over moves made in games weeks or even months ago. One particularly memorable evening involved a marathon session of Twilight Imperium, a sprawling space opera of a game that Zigailop found both eerily familiar and wildly inaccurate in its depiction of galactic politics. As the game entered its sixth hour, tensions were running high. Alliances had been made and broken, empires had risen and fallen, and more than one player looked ready to flip the massive table in frustration. I can't believe you're doing this, Mike, a player named Jessica hissed, her eyes narrowing as Mike moved his fleet into her territory. We had a deal. Mike shrugged, not meeting her gaze. Sorry, Jess, it's just a game, you know. And besides, you can't win if you don't take risks. Oh, it's just a game now, is it Jessica fired back, her voice dripping with sarcasm. Funny how it wasn't just a game when you spent 20 minutes arguing about the precise wording of the necrovirus faction abilities. The other players shifted uncomfortably, clearly sensing the rising tension. Zizarop glanced at Gluxis, wondering if they should intervene, but she subtly shook her head. This, too, was part of the human gaming experience. Just when it seemed like the situation might escalate beyond the boundaries of the game, another player, a quiet man named Raj, cleared his throat. Hey, um, I hate to interrupt this lovely diplomatic exchange, he said his tone a perfect blend of awkwardness and amusement. But I'm pretty sure I just won the game three turns ago, and nobody noticed. The room fell silent for a moment, as everyone frantically rechecked the victory conditions and Raj's achievements. Then, almost in unison, they burst out laughing. Are you kidding me? Mike groaned, burying his face in his hands. 
all that backstabbing for nothing. Jessica shook her head, her earlier anger melting into rueful amusement. Well played, Raj. I guess we were all too busy with our space opera drama to notice the actual wind condition. As the group began to pack up the game, their conversation shifted to analyzing key moments and strategies, punctuated by jokes about their own overly dramatic reactions. By the time they were ready to leave, Mike and Jessica were already making plans for a rematch, their earlier conflict seemingly forgotten. On their way back to their cloaked pod, Zizylorp turned to Gluxis, his compound eyes blinking rapidly as he tried to process what he'd just witnessed. On their way back to their cloaked pod, Zizylorp turned to Gluxis, his compound eyes blinking rapidly as he tried to process what he'd just witnessed. I don't understand, he said, his antenna twitching in confusion. One moment they were at each other's throats, and the next they were laughing and making plans for future games. How can they switch emotional states so quickly? Gluxis's scales shimmered with excitement. That's the beauty of it, Zizylorp. These games provide a safe space for humans to experience a wide range of emotions and social interactions. They can be fiercely competitive one moment and collaboratively strategic the next. It's like... Like... Waves. Like a training simulation for real-life social situations Zizylorp offered, exactly Gluxis exclaimed. But here's the really interesting part, they're not just training. They're genuinely enjoying themselves. The emotional roller coaster is part of the appeal. Zigzylor pondered this as they entered their pod and shed their human disguises. As his true form reasserted itself, he felt a strange sense of loss. There was something oddly liberating about the simple human shape, with its limited sensory inputs and inability to communicate telepathically. I think I'm starting to understand why they find these games so appealing, he said slowly. It's not just about winning or losing. It's about the experience itself, the shared narrative they create together. Gluxis beamed, her entire body glowing with approval. Now you're getting it. And don't think I haven't noticed how you've started to enjoy our gaming sessions, Mr. It's just pointless entertainment. Zizylorp's exoskeleton flushed a deep shade of embarrassment. Well, I suppose I may have been a bit hasty in my initial judgment. These games are far more complex and nuanced than I originally gave them credit for. Ha! Huh. I knew you'd come around, Gluxis laughed, her tail swishing with satisfaction. Now, how about a quick game of Pandemic before we write up our daily report? Zylorp found himself agreeing before he even realized what he was doing. As they set up the cooperative game about saving humanity from deadly diseases and irony not lost on either of them, he marveled at how quickly he'd gone from skeptic to enthusiast. Over the next few weeks, their research took them to various gaming events and conventions. They observed heated trading sessions in economic games like Sidereal Confluence where players negotiated complex deals and alliances. They watched in fascination as humans engaged in elaborate role-playing scenarios in games like Gloomhaven and Dungeons Dragons, creating rich narratives and developing deep emotional connections to fictional characters. One particularly enlightening experience came during a charity gaming marathon. For 24 hours straight, a group of humans played games to raise money for a local children's hospital. Zizylorp and Gluxis, still in their human guises, joined in for several hours. As the night wore on and fatigue began to set in, Zizylorp was struck by the unwavering enthusiasm of the human participants. Even as they struggled to keep their eyes open, they continued to laugh, strategize and support each other. During a particularly intense game of Spirit Island, a cooperative game about defending an island from colonizers, Zizylorp found himself fully immersed in the experience. As his spirit character unleashed a devastating attack against the invaders, he let out a very un-alien-like whoop of triumph. The other players cheered along with him, and for a moment Zizarop forgot that he was an alien researcher. He was just another gamer, sharing in the collective joy of a well-executed strategy. As the marathon neared its end, the event organizer announced the total amount raised. The room erupted in cheers and applause, with many participants hugging each other and wiping away tears of joy. Can you believe it? A bleary-eyed but ecstatic player said to Zylorp, We raised over $50,000 for the hospital, all while playing games. How amazing is that? Zylorp, still caught up in the emotional atmosphere, found himself nodding enthusiastically. It's incredible, he said, and he meant it. The idea that these seemingly trivial pastimes could be harnessed for such a noble cause was truly awe-inspiring. Later, as they debriefed in their pod, 
Fluxes couldn't stop talking about the event. Did you see how they used their love for games to make a real difference in their world? It's not just entertainment for them. It's a tool for social change, for building communities, for making connections across cultural and social boundaries. Zylorp had to agree. With each new experience, his understanding of human nature expanded. These games, he realized, were far more than just a pastime. They were a reflection of humanity's greatest strengths, their creativity, their adaptability, and their capacity for both competition and cooperation. As their research mission neared its end, Zizilorp and Glaxis faced a dilemma. They had gathered more data on human behavior and psychology than any previous xenoanthropological expedition. But they had also developed a genuine affection for the humans they had met and the experiences they had shared. We have to recommend initiating first contact, Glaxis said one evening, her tone uncharacteristically serious. These humans, they're ready. More than ready. They have so much potential, so much to offer the galactic community. The Zieg Zylorp found himself nodding in agreement. You're right. Their ability to navigate complex social situations, to strategize and adapt to changing circumstances, it's remarkable. And their capacity for empathy and cooperation, even in competitive situations, could teach our own species a thing or two. But as they prepared their final report, a new worry gnawed at Zieg Zylorp. Glaxis, he said hesitantly, what if? What if we've been influenced too much by our experiences? What if our judgment has been clouded by our enjoyment of these games? Gluxis considered this for a moment, her antenna waving thoughtfully. You know, she said finally, I think that's precisely why our recommendation is so important. We haven't just observed humans. We've interacted with them, shared experiences with them. We've seen their flaws and their strengths up close. She gestured to the stack of board games they had accumulated over their months on Earth. These aren't just games to them, Zizilorp. They're a microcosm of their entire civilization. Their ability to create and follow complex rule systems, to balance competition and cooperation, to use abstract thinking to solve problems. It's all there, in every game they play. Zizilorp looked at the colorful boxes, each one filled with memories of laughter, tension, triumph, and defeat. He thought about the friendships they had formed, the insights they had gained, and the genuine fun they had experienced. You're right, he said finally. The fact that we've enjoyed our time here, that we've connected with them on an emotional level, that's valuable data in itself. It shows that meaningful interspecies relationships are possible. As they finalized their report, recommending that the Galactic Council initiate first contact with humanity, Zizilorp felt a mix of excitement and sadness. Their mission was over, and soon they would have to leave Earth behind. Hey, Gluxis said, Noticing his mood, why the long face? This is great news for humanity. Z Zylorp's antenna drooped slightly. I know. It's just. I'm going to miss game nights at Meeples and Monsters, and I never did manage to win a game of terraforming Mars. Glexus's scales rippled with amusement. Well, who says we have to stop playing? I'm sure the Council will need cultural attaches once first contact is established. We could apply for the position. After all, who better to bridge the gap between our species than a couple of board game enthusiasts? The idea lifted Zylorp's spirits. You know, he said, his compound eyes gleaming with excitement. I think you might be onto something there. We could introduce some of our own games to the humans. Can you imagine their reaction to a real game of five-dimensional chess? Glexis laughed, the sound a mixture of her natural clicks and the human chuckle she had perfected over the past months. Oh, they'd love it and just think we could organize the first intergalactic board game tournament. As they sent off their report and began packing up their Earthside operation, Zizilorp felt a sense of optimism about the future. Humanity, with all its quirks and complexities, was about to join the galactic community. And thanks to the humble board game, they were more than prepared for the challenges and adventures that lay ahead. In the years that followed, as humanity took its first steps into the wider galaxy, board games played an unexpectedly crucial role. Diplomatic negotiations were often preceded by friendly games, allowing different species to understand each other's thought processes and cultural values in a low-stakes environment. Zylorp and Gluxis, now officially serving as cultural liaisons, watched with pride as humans introduced the concept of cooperative games to species that had never considered the idea of players working together against the games the game itself. 
They saw the spark of understanding in alien eyes as complex strategy games demonstrated humanity's capacity for long-term planning and adaptability. And on quiet evenings, when the weight of their responsibilities felt overwhelming, Zizilorp and Gluxis would gather a mixed group of humans and aliens for a game night. As laughter and friendly banter filled the room, transcending species boundaries, they would share a knowing look. In the end, their greatest discovery hadn't been about humanity's readiness for galactic citizenship. It had been about the universal power of play, of shared experiences, of the joy of gathering around a table and creating stories together. As Zigsilor placed his final worker in a heated game of alien architects of the galaxy a new hit game that blended elements of human and extraterrestrial game design, he couldn't help but smile. Who would have thought that humanity's love for moving pieces around a board would end up moving them across the stars?